फाइव फोर थ्री टू वन माई इंटरेस्ट इन बेसिक एजुकेशन गोस बैक टू द डे वेन महात्मा गांधी कन्वीन्ड अ कॉन्फ्रेंस एट वार्धा फॉर डिस्कसिंग दिस सब्जेक्ट अ फ्यू प्रोमिनेंट एजुकेशनिस्ट एंड वर्कर्स इन द कॉज ऑफ नेशनल एजुकेशन हैड ऑल्सो बीन इन्वाइटेड टू अटेंड दिस कॉन्फ्रेंस आई हैव बीन इन टच विद द प्रोग्रेस ऑफ द सिस्टम ऑफ एजुकेशन एवर सिंस I am therefore happy to have got this opportunity to come here and speak to you about what I feel about this problem although I know I might be repeating the views expressed by me earlier it is also likely that the views which I express are not in consonance with those of others particularly of educationist besides it is also to be seen how far my views fit in with the policy which is being pursued by the central and state governments in this connection and how far it is practicable to modify that policy therefore i hope what i am going to say will be taken as my personal opinion and that you will discuss it as such with an open mind without fear or favor it will be agreed that the system of education right from the first primary class to the highest university course which we are following today is the same as introduced by the british government in this country we have not been able to introduce any fundamental change in that system even after the attainment of independence it is pointless to blame anyone for it because the peace manner in which the transfer of power took place made it inevitable that along with the government till machinery and other things the system of education should also come to us as a heritage of the old regime it is now our duty to give thought to each one of these problems and decide in the light of present day condition how they can be solved and then to act upon what we have decided there is no doubt that in introducing this system of education the principal motive of the british government was to secure as much advantage as possible for establishing itself in this country the britishers also thought that as compared to their own culture and literature there was nothing much in indian culture and literature which might be said to be worth preserving there is no doubt in course of time their views underwent some change the progress of science in europe meanwhile confirmed them in their view that scientific education could be imparted only through the medium of english consequently partly for the sake of administrative convenience and partly to propagate their own language and culture they stick to their own system of education which they introduced in this country there is no doubt that the education received by our earlier generation was based on this very system those people knew little of indian literature or culture and hardly felt drawn towards it although a few indian scholars who were inspired by english education did study indian literature and wrote a good deal in praise of it thus we find two schools of thought in this country the followers of one school believe that our own language alone can be the medium of education and until that is done education is bound to remain confined 
to a small section of society and will never spread among the masses the other school of thought thinks that in this scientific age our country cannot cut itself a drift from european thought that and that at least higher education should continue to be imparted through the medium of english if that is done they argue we shall fail to pull our weight and lag behind other nations in the race for material progress these views as a matter of fact apply not only to the medium of instruction but actually to the whole system of education our people have responded more and more to the call of education during the last 50 years and this is evident from the phenomenal increase in the number of educational institutions in 1911-12 when burma and pakistan were also part of india there were 186 universities and colleges in india as compared with 537 in 148-49 though burma and pakistan had separated leaving india smaller in area and population it is clear from the figures that there is a widespread demand for educational facilities this demand is no longer confined to towns alone but is evident among people of the rural areas also one result of this spread of education has been that many educated people and them find themselves unemployed government jobs and service and private undertakings offer limited openings for the educated only a small fraction of successful scholars can be observed in them a large majority of the educated are averse to taking up their parental occupations as a result of their education they have lost the capacity to take up those occupations and they are not equipped to follow any other either mahatma gandhi who had anticipated all this thought that this system of education which is so expensive would not do if education was to be brought within the reach of every indian rich or poor he therefore thought of a new system of education which has become to be known as basic education and which indian and foreign educational experts have declared to be highly useful according to gandhi as far as i understood him there are two basic merits in this new system firstly education under the system is imparted not merely through books but through some kind of practical work so that the knowledge which children acquire will not be the result of mere memorizing but of actual experience he thought and some of the leading educationists were at one with him that knowledge acquired in this way created a degree of consciousness efficiency and a feeling of self reliance all of which could would come handy to one when starting life